Dear students, welcome to the organ printing course. Let's start our first lecture that is introduction to bioprinting. So before going into actually telling you what is bioprinting, let us start with where exactly this bioprinting fits in the whole scheme of tissue engineering and regenerative medicine. So if you see the basic principle of tissue engineering is to generate artificial tissues and organs for repair, regenerate, augment the diseased or damaged tissue. So in this process, the first step is because our interest is to you develop artificial tissues for a particular patient, then we start with isolation of cells from that particular patient. So there we can use uh, different techniques, but by bi yeah, biopsy is one such technique where we collect a very small amount of tissue from a, the patient's that particular tissue, and then we use that biopsy tissue for cell isolation. So we isolate the cells, as well as the target cell basically for from that biopsy sample, and then we use them for expanding. So the cell number is expanded using standard cell culture techniques, using a standard uh, tissue culture plates, providing all necessary conditions like nutrients, even this even nutrient and oxygen, all these things are provided. So the cell number increases, so that, that is the expansion of cells. And when the cell number reaches to a certain level so that we can use them for further use, then we you seed them on a substrate or it's also called a scaffold different 3d different 3d scaffolds are being used for cell seeding and then we after culturing them on the cell cell seeded on the scaffolds for certain time period and then that we they further the cells they further grow grow in numbers they migrate within the structure within the scaffold and then they produce or lay down extracellular matrix within the structure so that the graft is being produced so that is the generation of graft then that graft after maturation we can actually go for implantation of this graft in that on the damaged or diseased tissue so that then it will help or facilitate the tissue regeneration process so this is the whole scheme of uh, tissue engineering and here the bioprinting fits in where we actually trying to develop artificial tissues or organs here we don't print separately scaffold and then seed cells but what we do we mix the cells along with some materials the hydrogel and then we use that mixture cell plus hydrogel mixture that is also called bio ink and then we use that for printing artificial tissues and organs so at this stage we use them for for generating this graft with the gra generation of graft can be done with the help of this bioprinting process there are various types of scaffold fabrication methods are available starting from solvent casting, particulate leaching, phase separation or phase drying, gas foaming, wet spinning, electro spinning. Also there are supercritical fluid CO2 products uh, based scaffold manufacturing techniques and also different additive manufacturing techniques. So among this, in this course we will be discussing the mostly the how additive manufacturing techniques can be used for preparation of artificial tissues or organs. So that is called bioprinting. A little introduction about the additive manufacturing or 3D printing. If you know 3D uh, additive manufacturing or 3D printing is a process of fabricating three-dimensional solid objects using a digital file. That means we design a 3D structure using a some Computed design software like SolidWorks, SolidEdge, there are many of such things. We design that 3D structure with in the in the using that software, and then we then we use that digital file created or the 3D image file created using the software to print the 3D structure using a 3D printer. So 3D printing is a process by which we develop the three-dimensional object using a 3D printer from the digital from a digital file and then this process because why it is called additive manufacturing because this process is an additive process we, we add small amount of material keep on, and then simul continuously to make the whole 3D structure so this is an additive, additive process and then 
how the diff whole structure is printed basically by adding as i told already by adding small amount of material by we add the materials layer by layer so first the first layer is printed then on top of that the second layer is printed so then the successive layers are of materials are printed to develop or to fabricate the whole structure so it's a layer by it's also a layer by layer manufacturing process now each of these successive layers can also can be also as uh, can also be considered or can also be viewed as a thin slice of horizon thin horizontal slice of the whole object right. so this is 3d printing so here mainly is the three steps involved in this process the first step start that start with the modeling where where we print or where we design the 3d and structures of the particular object that suppose you want to print a particular structure then it's always you start with the designing of the 3d structures and the designing can be done as i told ordered using some cad software that is computer design software and there you can actually create the whole 3d geometry so that is the process called modeling where basically we create the 3d models and also that is the virtual blueprint for printing the whole 3d structure and then there are various other operations like in 3d printing because the printer prints in a layer by layer manner so we after creating this 3d object generally we go for slicing that object so that we create the different horizontal sections or slices so each slices will be taken at a time by the 3d printer and that will be printed as a layer right so that slicing operation is also a major thing and then meshing operation are also mesh generation there is another process by which we can actually create the mesh of the 3d print structure so that the printer can print them in the in that fashion then the actual pr printing process is done where the 3d printers read the design like whatever you have created that 3d design that 3d using cat software that design the printer will uh, read that design and then lay down the materials in a layer by layer map fashion successively so that and those layers will get joined with each other to get the so that we can generate the whole 3d structure the next process is finishing because most of the time the object that is produced with a 3d printers is not used is ready for use or for market ready for market so the finishing operation come is done there where the different types of finishing like removal of the support structure of uh, polishing finishing sanding buffing coloring everything all these things process are done so that the process the appearance of the 3d printed structure improves the user user experience will further also improve now the next question is whether 3d printing is a bottom up approach or top down approach if you see 3d if you see 3d printing is a additive process like where we add materials layer by layer to build the whole structure so we start from scratch to build the whole structure so in bottom up actually that is what bottom up process where we use that to build the whole structure top down is when we start with the suppose we start with the bigger thing then we cut down that thing that the whole build the whole block into a 3d structure so that is top down process so 3d printing is a or additive manufacturing is a bottom up approach now let's discuss uh, what are the different types of 3d printing modalities available and if you see 3d printing is not a single technology it's an umbrella of different technologies and various types of 3d printing technologies evolved over time because of the because all this 3d printing technique or each of this technique is capable of printing one type of material one or different one or two the few different types of materials like if we take example like fused depression modeling is a printed print technique where it uses mostly it uses thermoplastic material for printing 3d structure and it's an extrusion based process that means it extrude the material the thermoplastic molten thermoplastic material in the form of a 3d structure then there are uh, electron beam free form fabrics and technique that uses metal wares as a input material and print the print the whole structure similarly different types of 3d printers they are capable of uh, using different other types of materials 
and then printing different structures. So based upon your application, first you have to see, see the what type of materials you are going to use and what type of structures you are going to print. Depending upon that, you can select one or other type of 3D printers. So these are the different types of 3D printers, 3D printing techniques that has been evolved over time. That has that those are here listed here. Now commonly four different types of 3D printers are used mostly and when 3D printers are mostly chosen for an application that is depending upon the materials to be used and what type of structures you are going to produce. So four different types of 3D printing techniques A common 3D printing techniques used for medical applications are stereotography, selective laser sintering, fused deviation modeling and thermal inkjet printing. In this lecture, in this course, we will be discussing uh, what are the printers mostly used for bioprinting applications and I will we'll see that in a, in a later slide. Now let us understand what is bioprinting. Right? We have seen 3D printing, now what is bioprinting? Bioprinting is also an extension of 3D printing techniques but here a few things are difference or difference, few differences with 3D printing like because in our interest is to print artificial functional human tissues and organs so always we start with the materials that is that is the building block block of any tissue tissues or organs like the cells cells are the building block of a tissue so we start with cells right so we use living cells along with some biologically relevant materials or bioactive factors to print the human tissues and organs and this is also a layer by layer process so we lay layer by layer fashion we deposit these living cells along with biologically relevant materials with or without bioactive factors to develop the fun artificial or hum functional human tissues and organs so this process is called bioprinting it's an at semi automatic or semi automatic semi automatic process the process of this bioprinting is also can be divided into three steps like pre-processing, processing and post-processing. In pre-processing, we do all this is required for printing a structure, tissue structures like because now suppose we are targeting a particular tissue structure, we want to print a print that, then always we do not start here with CAD modeling of the tissue. What we do? You use different bioimaging modalities because all of these tissues are unique there's my structure microstructure size shape everything is unique so we start with different bioaging modalities so we take capture the image of the particular target tissue and then uh, we can get the 3d image of this particular tissue structure using with, with this bioaging model like ct and mri we get the 3d image and those images are mostly available in DICOM formats. Then we convert them into a STL file. So STL file too, because that STL file is is mostly understood by the most of the 3D printers. So that is the 3D geometry we design, or that is the CAD file we generate from this imaging from the in 3D images. And that those are that, that is the pre-processing steps. After that, the actual printing process is done. So there is processing where we develop the bioing first. And bioing, as I already told you. Bioink is a printable formulation consisting of cells, matrix materials, bioactive factors. So you we develop the bioinks using a combination of all these different things, and then it is those after the bioink is developed that is loaded to the bioprinter, and also here from here the CAD model is also loaded to the bioprinter. So the the bioprinter will now use this bioink to print the 3D structure using the design that is that is created or the 3d image or the still file that is being loaded so then we'll get the or we'll be able to print the structure and the but when we print a 3d st structure using a buying soon after printing it is not called tissue it is called pre-tissue because at this stage it is just a cluster of cells plus materials and bio bioactive factors so the function is not yet established within this tissue structure so that's why we don't call them tissue we call them pre-tissue now upon, upon maturation when we provide all necessary conditions like nutrients oxygen all these things then this the cells here they will 
proliferate, migrate, differentiate, and also they will grow. They are then the also the whole function of this tissue or the specific functions that is required for the particular tissue will develop. At this stage, we, that can be they are matured, and then we can go for implantation to a to a particular site. So that is the diseased or damaged site. Right. So that is post processing. Now the main steps, as I said, the main steps of 3D bioprinting is first pre-processing, where we generate the CAD geomet CAD file using bioimaging modalities like CT, MRI, all these, and then that is the those are the blueprints for printing 3D structures. So that is the and here that is basically here we create the pre-processing. Also in the here and the then the actual process processing or the printing where we create the uh, we generate the bioing. We do the actual printing using the that CAD file and then solidification of the structure, printed structure or match that is also important for stabilization of the first for the stability. After that, we do post processing. In the post processing step, that is where we actually mature the tissue. The tissue maturation happens. There we can culture them in some bioreactor, providing all the necessary conditions for their survival. And also we can further also use some conditions for accelerated tissue maturation. So the steps involved in this organ printing are as follows. Like first you have to select the target tissue or organ. Like right? that is the very first step. Suppose your interest is to print a particular target tissue or organ so that we can actually basically repair or damage, repair or regenerate the damaged or disease tissue so we first we select that particular tissue that is the target tissue or organ that is you have suppose that you have selected them then you can take an image that means you using the bio bioimaging modalities like CT and MRI we take images or capture images of that particular tissue in three dimension that is means the different slices right so then from that we generate a blueprint using different CAD software so that we can get the 3D image data or the virtual data of this particular tissue and organ. Then we you prepare the bioink. As I said, bioink is a printable formulation consisting of cells plus materials, materials and also bioactive factors. So we prepare the bioink, and this bioink is should be is very specific for a particular tissue. Like right? suppose your interest is to print a skin. Then you will be developing a bioing that is suitable for printing the skin like this. that is a skin specific bioing. Then so the bioing is prepared and then after the bioing prepared after the next step is the actual bioprinting where we use this bioing using the virtual blueprint that is the design the bioprinter will print the tissue structure and then we allow them to solidify or stabilize the tissue structure and then after, after that it goes for maturation where the tissues will be or the printed structure will be mature so the cells will grow they will produce the extracellular matrix lay down the extracellular matrix and in this process also the the biomaterials that we use mostly those are biodegradable materials so they will start degrading and so the tissue will get matured and then it can be used for different applications including uh, implantation to the target tissue or target tissue or organ structure let's just, let's see what is the state of art in this technology that means what is the current results and achievements over the years right so the very first attempt of bioprinting or 3d printing was done by c w hall in 1984 then he used a technique called sla that is stereolithography technique he invented that technique and he then that was it at in 1984 then in 1996, Dr. Gavar Falgax and his colleague, they made an observation that the tissue have, or the cells have liquid-like properties. That means, suppose if we print a cells, a cluster of cells, then the cells can able to migrate and they able to organize themselves into a particular tissue hierarchy. So the cells and it, they have seen this during embryonic development, also during wound healing. This tissue like uh, liquid like property cells have this liquid like property, they stick to each other and then they organize. 
In 2003, a very important breakthrough happened when Dr. Thomas Boland, he, his lab basically modified a HP inkjet printer to print cells. So that was the very first attempt of printing cells with a modified bioprinter. And in this case, a modified HP inkjet printer. And also, the same year, another important breakthrough happens when a scientist named Dr. Anthony Attila from Wake Forest Institute of Regenerative Medicine. They developed a synthetic scaffold seeded with the patient's own cell to replace the urinary bladder of that particular patient. Now, this is a very important breakthrough because the patient survives after this with this synthetic scaffold that is seeded with his own cells. So that, that is the urinary bladder, artificial urinary bladder, and then that he 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 was doing fine after that. Now in 2004, Invision Tech they have created their first extrusion based bioprinter named 3D Bioplotter. And then also in 2004, Dr. again Dr. Gavar Falgas, he developed a new technology based upon his observation that tissue has this uh, fluid like properties. So he engineered 3D tissue with only cells. Then Organovo is an American company. They have created the first, their first bioprinting technologies, bioprinters using Falgax technology. That is the name is Novogen MMX. Then in 2000, after that, there are series of discoveries or at the series attempts where bioprinting technology was used to develop one or other tissues. Like in 2000, there are some examples I am giving here. So in 2011, first cardiac sheet or patch was developed. Then in after that, first lung tissue patch was developed. And then Organovo again created a in vitro liver model that is used for drug and toxicity screening. And then they have supplied this to different pharma industry for testing their drugs to check whether the drug has any toxic effect on the liver or not. That liver is an in vitro liver model. Then in 2019 or 2019, another important breakthrough happens. A research, some a few researchers from Tel Aviv University, they have double, uh, bioprinted a four chamber heart or a human heart. They have printed and they have shown the possibility of developing an artificial heart with the help of a bioprinter. After and after that, there has been various attempts to print different the other tissue structures. And also, in the same time, there has been a few attempts where researchers from various across the globe have used their bioprinter or uh, they have done the animal trials of this of their bioprinted tissues, organs, structures. So the evolution of tissue and bioengineering is as follows. So before 2015, like in the past 2015, people, mostly the researchers were printed small tissue size and for that, and those are mostly used for different uh, in vitro drug screening or toxicity screening and few other small tissue structures. So mostly we just proof of concepts were developed. And then in recent past, like in uh, starting from 2015 to 2020, simple tissues were being bioprinted, like those are like cardiac patches, segments and tubes, less small blood vessels, all these things are bioprinted. And then at present, like, like in this decade, 2020 to 2030, researchers are mostly trying to develop different tissue structures but uh, like uh, liver lobules, kidney structure, skin, uh, little large skin patches and then the different other other tissue structures or tissue or organ structures. But if you are thinking of a full organ like kidney or complex organs like kidney, liver, then th those are not yet fully developed or those are, those are not bioprinted till now because those, those organs are very complex. So researchers hope that maybe by 2030 or after 2030, we'll be able to develop or we'll be able to bioprint the whole complex tissue structures or that will be functional. So that can be 
used for implantation because there are many patients waiting for artificial tissues or organs because the demand there is a the huge the demand is far more than the actual supply so that's why we need to develop artificial tissues and organs to save patients and by by we hope that bioprinting can be a promise bioprinting is a promising technology and definitely it has the prospect to but prospect to fabricate artificial tissues and organs so but at this moment the complex organs are not being bioprinted Now let's discuss about the different bioprinting approaches or what are the different types of bioprinting modalities available. As I discussed in 3D printing like there are four different common types of 3D printers available. Similarly, if we again classify the bioprinting technologies, there are mostly three types. Inkjet based bioprinting, extrusion based bioprinting and laser assisted bioprinting. Now each of these bioprinting techniques, they ha have their own advantages and disadvantages. But what types of bioprinting or what type of bioprinting technology is suitable for a particular application that is always depending upon the application, depending upon the target tissue structures and what that means what type of tissue structure, tissue or organs you are interested to bioprint or you are uh, targeting to bioprint and what are the mat what is the material that is going to be used for bioprinting this bioprinting that particular tissue or organs and what are the different types of cells that that will be used for bioprinting of the particular tissue so that so all this so using of a particular 3d bioprinting technique depends upon all this 